Hi guys, and welcome to part 50 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Now, as this is episode 50, a lot of people were wondering whether I was planning on doing anything special. Uh, and I actually am, but not in this video. I'm actually planning a short mini-series of videos where I look back at all the mods I have covered in these 50 episodes and see how those mods are doing today. So, you guys are more than welcome to join me for those, so we can see how Skyrim and the mods for Skyrim have changed over time. But, let's get started on the mods for this video, and in this video I'm going to be focusing on player homes. And I'm starting with a mod that has a very spectacular player home. This mod is called Halls of Dovandor, I hope I'm saying that correctly, and as you can see in this video, this player home is found in Sovngarde, so probably one of the most spectacular backdrops for a player home that there is. Now, to get to this player home, you need to pass through a great big portal, which is very impressive. And the idea is that when you defeated Alduin the World Eater, this portal opened, but only the Dover King can step through it. However, there is a small problem in that you actually don't have to have defeated Alduin and you can, to go through the portal. I managed to go through this portal on a character that had not finished the main quest. Um, so it would be nice to see that portal deactivated if you have not been to Sovngarde and killed Alduin. But that is a very small and minor issue, easily forgotten once you arrive at this player home. It is quite breathtaking. You're on these floating islands and you have this immense, immense building in front of you. It's bigger than just about any of the buildings I've seen in Skyrim. It really is gigantic. And the inside is pretty much the same. It has these huge halls with these massive vaulted ceilings, a lot of ornamentation everywhere. It's um, it very reminiscent of the hall you enter into in the main quest, and you really should you could imagine hundreds of warriors having great big parties in this place. There is a hall of war uh, with these great big barrels. Um, it also has a forge and a blacksmith area, a smelter, um, which is, is kind of an interesting mix, but it really works. The idea of these sort of Vikings making weapons, having parties, and probably fights right there. There is a hall of magic with this great little garden going on. Um, and, oh, you'll find a spell in this place that will allow you to teleport back and forth to this player home. And there's this room called the Antechamber of the Fallen with all of these larger-than-life stuffed animals, I guess they are, or stuffed creatures. Possibly creatures that the Dovahkiin was supposed to have killed. Um, and there's, there's this especially impressive skeleton in the ceiling. There is a collector's hall, which looks to me like a museum. Um, it's got all of these sort of display cases, places to put weapons and shields. Um, lots of, again, what look like statues um, to creatures you'll find in Skyrim. I mean, describing it as a museum is probably the most accurate description, actually. Um, that's how it feels. And there is a throne for the Dragonborn as well, which is pretty impressive. And when you activate it, the you don't sit in it as you would normally. It, you sort of lounge, uh, which is kind of, kind of a cool effect, actually. And as if that wasn't enough, there's even an underground area. And the underground area is enormous. And it has this sort of, um, almost this very druidic Stonehenge kind of affair in this underground cavern, which is uh, very atmospheric indeed. Now, in actual fact, it's in a hidden area, um, and I'm going to show you on the video where it is now, so close your eyes if you don't want a spoiler. Okay, you can open your eyes again now. Um, and, oh, there's also a vault area with lots of security. Um, and this sort of, this cage that seems to have been chained and put inside another cage and a safe inside it. Um, a bit ridiculous, but 
You never know, you might have something so valuable the gods themselves might come and try and steal it. And just to top it all off, it seems that the Dover King's bedroom is basically a great big Viking ship that is suspended from one of the halls by great big chains. And you get there via a little teleport, which is a very cool idea. Now I will tell you that I didn't manage to take my followers there. Um, I'm assuming that's deliberate because only the Dragonborn should be able to go there. But I think I would like to see the ability to bring your followers here. And I would like the ability, um, if you're using a mod such as My Home is Your Home, for the followers to get there by themselves if you dismiss them. So it's the sort of thing I would like to see as an addition. Uh, but all in all, this is a truly spectacular player home. Now obviously that player home is a little over the top and maybe too much for some people. Um, and if so, there is another player home by the same mod author. Um, and he released this earlier and it's called Hunter's Cabin of Riverwood. And it does seem like this mod author likes to go from one extreme to the other because the Hunter's Cabin mod is in many ways the complete opposite. It's a very small little cabin. It's very, very down to earth. It feels very realistic, very rustic. And I mean that in the best possible way. There is something about this player home that just suits Skyrim. It suits the area around Riverwood. Um, it's a great home to get at the start of the game. It's not overkill. When you get inside, it's clean. It looks cozy. It looks warm. But there's, there's only a few basic amenities. A bed, um, some wardrobes, two chests, uh, nothing extravagant. Um, and you actually have to get the key for this cabin by going to a mine somewhere. I, I won't tell you the full details, um, but you do have to put a little bit of work in to get this this home. But then you've got a player home very early on um, that will meet your very basic needs. And this cabin is it's so picturesque and it's so inviting that it does make me think that it's the sort of place that I would like to retire to. You know, once you've finished your dragon slaying, once you've finished your adventuring, you just want a bit of the quiet life. Maybe you've got a castle somewhere, but wouldn't it be nice to just get out, get away from everything, go to a cabin, sit, relax, and watch the sunset. And this is the sort of cabin for that. Now, installation of these mods is very simple. Just go along to the Nexus page for, say, Halls of Dovendor, download with Manager, and activate. Same is true for the Hunter's Cabin of Riverwood. Um, for load order, I allowed Boss to decide my load order. However, I don't have any mods that change the area around Riverwood or the area around Throat of the World. If you do, there may be some issues, and if you want these to appear, they should probably come lower in the load order. However, you would have to look at this mod by mod. If any of you have installed these mods and had conflicts and have any information for me, feel free to send it to me, and I will do an encore video telling people what they should do to get this mod working, if anything. But I haven't seen anything, so I think you're pretty safe letting boss just decide where to put them. And that's it for this video. As usual, I am going to end with some of the great screenshots you guys have been posting on my Nexus page. Um, if you'd like to post some images of your own, you can follow the link down below. You're more than welcome to do that. I will try to get as many of these screenshots included in my videos as I can. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, please remember, click the like button. I always appreciate that. I look forward to seeing you guys in whichever video you decide to join me next. And until then, as always, have fun.